Good day, netizens! So today, we'll be talking about our non-ideal solutions. So most solutions are not ideal, like most people are not. Yung jowa nyo ba, ideal yan? Hindi. May pagkakamali rin yan. May kabahuan din yan. Anyways, so these deviations from the ideality are due to the real interactions between our components. So in a binary solution A, B, yung interaction ni A and B will cause some deviation from ideality of that solution. So we can consider two types of uh, um, we can consider two types of deviation. We have negative and positive deviation, and this deviation relates to Raoult's law. And ibig sabihin pag na ideal solution na tayo, hindi na hindi ka na nagfollow ng Raoult's law. You have a i will not be equal to your mole fraction anymore. The activity will not be equal to the mole fraction. So there are two cases that we can consider. First, we have yung negative deviation. Sa negative deviation natin, the addition of B into A or A into B lowers the activity of either component. So makita natin the dashed lines. This gives you the uh, activity for the ideal case. And pag pinaghalo natin si A and B, hindi na sila sumunod dun sa dashed line natin. Mas mababa na sila. Yung activity mo is lower than your XI. So in this, we can say that AI is less than XI for your negative deviation. For the positive deviation naman, it is the opposite. When we put A into B or B into A, what happens is that the activity of the components increase. It is a positive deviation from the ideal case. So this happens because the interaction between the solute and solvent atom is stronger than solute-solute and solvent-solvent atoms increasing their activity. And in general, for the positive deviation, AI is greater than XI. So since for a non-ideal solution, uh, your activity is not equal to the mole fraction, a correction factor known as the activity coefficient, gamma I, or this actually the Raoult-Chan activity coefficient, can be used for us to relate your activity with your mole fraction. So the activity coefficient relates your mole fraction to the activity by multiplying it by gamma i. So this is your activity coefficient. For ideal solutions where a i is equal to x i, gamma i will be equal to 1. So let's take an example for our activity coefficient. So this graph shows you the activity of aluminum in some solution, in some solid solution. So what we're looking for is, so this is a copper solution. What we're looking for is to find the activity coefficient of aluminum when the mole fraction or the atomic fraction of aluminum is 49 atom percent. So this is yung ating activity data plotted against your mole fraction data or atom percent data. At 0.49 percent, nandito siya. Uh, sorry, but 49 atom percent aluminum, nandito siya. So, can get the activity there? It will be here. This activity is around, uh, I think this is around 0 0.255. So, this is 0 0.255. Activity of aluminum. Yung XAL natin, this is equal to 0 0.49. From our equation, we have AI is equal to gamma I XI. Then gamma I will be equal to X. No, gamma I will be equal to AI over XI. Gamma I will be equal then to 0 0.255 over 0 0.49. And we'll see from the graph as seen, makita natin we have a negative deviation since yung gamma natin is less than 1, which is equal to 0 0.520. Since most of the solutions that we'll be dealing with are actually dilute, ibig sabihin niyan is the amount of solute is usually much less than the amount of the solvent or yung number of host atoms natin mas marami dun sa impurities natin, like in most materials. So like, if you remember um, carbon in steel, that's only around 2 weight percent, yung maximum niya ng amount of carbon in steel. 
usually dilute yung treatment natin sa mga solutions natin, it is important to learn about Henry's Law. Since Henry's Law gives an idea of the activity of these dilute solutions with respect to their mole fraction. So Henry's Law states that for dilute solutions, the partial volume vapor pressure of a solute in a dilute solution is proportional to its mole fraction. As a consequence of this, what would happen is that for Henry's Law, we can get that for dilute solutions, the activity of that component in the solution will be proportional to its mole fraction, xi. This would imply then that our activity coefficient would be constant. Makita natin dito, for dilute solutions, we can assume that itong last activity natin has a constant slope, constant na activity coefficient. And this constant activity coefficient is actually what we call the constant uh, activity coefficient at infinite dilution. And for Henry's law, we would have this equation. Ai is equal to gamma i not xi, where this is our activity coefficient at infinite dilution. And again, this one is constant. So, let's just uh, contrast it with the other activity coefficient. Usually, activity coefficient mo pwede yung magbago depende dito sa AI and XI natin. But for Henry's law, ang sinasabi niya, this activity coefficient at this regime, here, atong dilute region natin, the activity coefficient at infinite dilution, it is, again, constant. So, for some problems involving our non-ideal solutions, especially when we're dealing with dilute solutions, it is more convenient for us to express yung ating activities in terms of alternative standard states. So one such uh, alternative standard state is the Henryan standard state. So this has something to do with Henry's law, and what we're doing is we're extending the treatment of the dilute solution to, it, to the pure form. Or basically, ang ginawa natin is we're treating as if yung behavior ni solute as a dilute solution is the same as if it is your or the behavior of the solute at the pure solution is the same as if it is a pure substance. So in this case, tinitreat natin tong activity na to, pag in-extend natin na to, this activity will be equal to 1. So if this substance A, this will be HA will be equal to 1 at XA equal to 1. So nag-shift lang tayo nung ating ah, uh, tawag Nag-shift lang tayo ng ating scale, basically. So, for a component, uh, let's now shift to B para consistent tayo sa module nyo. For a component B, we can define the Henryan activity, HB, to be equal to FB, XB, where again, HB is the Henryan activity. Fb is your Henryan activity coefficient. Activity coefficient. This is ito. This one. And yung Xb natin, this is your mole fraction. Yung Fb na yan, this would actually have the same value as your gamma naught. So, itong Henryan activity natin, this is also a valid form of the activity. So, instead of using the activity na A, we can use H. So, we, us we usually use this when we're now in our uh, dilute solutions, which are most of our succeeding problems. We can also define the one weight percent standard state. So, yung mole fraction of B in AB is related to the weight percentage of B by this equation. XB is equal to weight percent of B over MWB or the molecular weight of B over yung total na yan, weight percent B molecular weight B plus 100 minus weight percent A over molecular weight so essentially, ginawa natin dito, kinuha natin yung number of moles, number of moles, number of moles, we get Xb. In a dilute solution, we know that weight percent B is less than 
is much less than yung weight percent ng ating, sorry, ng A natin. So dito, we can reduce further itong equation na to. And ang mangyari is we can approximate XB or the more fraction of B to be equal to weight percent of B times molecular weight of A over 100 times molecular weight times molecular weight of B. Now let's introduce the one weight percent standard state which is defined as the following. Yung one weight percent standard state natin, HB, it has HB weight percent, one weight percent, or the one weight percent standard activity over the weight percent of B. This would approach one as your weight percent of B approaches zero. The activity of B under this standard state would then be HB, one weight percent. This is your activity. Would be equal to, same lang kanina, FB1, weight percent. But instead of XB, ang nangyari na dito is we're now using weight percent of B. So we're just comparing, or dito, kinuha naman natin yung as activity in the one weight percent scale. We use FB one weight percent or the activity coefficient, the one weight percent scale. And instead of using mole fraction, we're now using weight fraction, our weight percentage. This one is the activity one weight percent activity coefficient. And at the one weight percent scale, ang mangyari is we're defining that HB of one weight percent is actually equal to one in this scale. So for the next problem will be actually using etong scale na natin na ito for our multi-component solutions. So if you don't really understand this, I think you can just ignore it, yung derivation and such, and just use it as it is. Tandaan nyo lang na ito yung kailangan yung gamitin. So now we'll go into our multi-component solutions. So recall that the activity coefficient of a solute in a binary solution can be obtained using this one if your AI and xi are known, gamma i is equal to ai and over xi. However, the above relation, or this one, does not hold for multi-component solutions. The solutes, even present in small concentrations, can exert their influence on other solutes as well on each other. And when a solvent A contains components, so A yung solvent natin contains B, C, D, dot, 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 etc., the Henryan activity coefficient of one of the solutes, let's say B, may be expressed as a product of the factors which represent the effect of each of the other components. So, ang nangyari dito is we're essentially looking for the effect of the interaction of C, D, and whatever other solutes to B. For solute B, the Henryan activity coefficient, or FB, will then be equal to F B B F B C dot 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 dot. So for simplicity's sake, let's just take na meron tayong A and meron tayong dalawang component B C and a solvent of A. So we have F B is equal to F B B times F B C, where F B B is the activity coefficient of B in a binary solution of A B, or the activity coefficient pag B lang yun nandito kay A. And FBC, this one, this is your interaction coefficient. This interaction coefficient is a measure of the effect of C on B. Similarly, if we now have, let's say, A, B, C, and meron pa tayong B dito, yung FB natin, or the Henry activity coefficient for B will be equal to F, B, B, F, B, C, F, B, D, where F, B, B is, this is the activity coefficient of B if siya lang yung na kay A, F, B, C, and F, B, D 
are yung ating interaction coefficients of C on B and B on B. Yung interaction coefficient na to of a component, let's say I, or let's say C on B or D on B, is then related to the interaction parameter of the component I on solute B and the mole fraction of the component I, Xi, such that ln of F Bi is equal to epsilon Bi Xb. So let's say for C, the interaction of C on B, ln of F Cb will be equal to epsilon of B C X. For multi-component solutions then, we can get another form for the Henrian activity coefficient. Using this one, inserting it here, express this in terms of ln, we get ln of Fb will be equal to ln of Fb B plus ln of Fbc plus ln of Fbd. Then using ito, punta dito, we will get ln of Fb is equal to epsilon B on B Xb plus epsilon B C X Xc and we have sorry X palette. and we have epsilon B D, X, D. So, correction lang kanina. This should be X of D. Kasi yung I yan. Dito, I. Then, we have ito. So, we can get the Henry activity coefficient using the interaction parameters and yung mole fraction of the component interacting with D. So, dito, mole fraction of C with C or fraction of D with D. Though sometimes, it is more convenient for us to find yung weight percent equivalent itong mole fraction na to. This is why I introduced yung ating one weight percent standard state kanina. So what will happen is we can transform this into the one weight percent standard state. So I'll spare you the derivation. And what we'll get is this one. Log of Fb in the one weight percent standard state would then be equal to E B B weight percent of V plus E C sorry E B C weight percent of C plus E B D weight percent of D where yung E natin dito is related to yung epsilon natin by this equation, epsilon b i x i is equal to 2.303 e i b weight percent of i. So basically, we can convert lang natin to from log to ln and yung weight percent to x i. Then in general, from dito, nila dito sa ating bang expression for the weight, one weight percent uh, Henrian activity coefficient. We can then express the uh, Henrian activity from this one. So we know the Henrian activity is equal to Hb nasa one weight percent standard tayo will be equal to Fb one weight percent times weight percent of so, substituting this, uh, substituting itong kanina, yung ating FB, FBB, FBC, FBD, back here, we get HB, 1 weight percent, is equal to FBB, FBC, FBD, dot, 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 weight percent of B. And now, if you use this, Back here, we get HB one weight percent is equal to E 
B B A percent of B plus E B C weight percent of C plus E B D weight percent of D this will become <coughs> log log H B one weight percent plus sis in log natin to buong side log log this will become plus log weight percent of b so we can use this equation or this equation to get the henrian activity on the 1.8 percent scale for our components in our solution so as an example, let's use this problem. Calculate the activity of sulfur HS for a pig iron containing 0.06% sulfur, 4% carbon, 1.5% manganese, 1.5% silicon, and 0.2% copper by weight if the following interaction parameters are given. So what we're looking for here is yung ating activity of sulfur HS. So we know from kanina, yung HS natin, kaya natin mako from here. Or, so HS for H of sulfur will then be equal to yung interaction, uh, activity coefficient is sulfur, FS times weight percent of S. So ginamit natin weight percent kasi weight percent yung binigay sa atin by weight. Yung FS natin, alam natin, we can decompose that into this form. EBB, EBC, EBD, weight percent D, weight percent C, weight percent D. So we have sulfur. Sulfur in iron. And kasama ni sulfur is carbon, MN, SI, and copper. So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 na salutes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 na salutes in iron. So, we would have 5 terms with respect to this FS here. So, mangyari ito sa log. Sa HS natin will be kalam log HS will be equal to E S so first is the interaction of S with itself, ESS, weight percent S, plus the interaction is sulfur with, next, with carbon, ESC, weight percent C, so then carbon and sulfur. Next, we'll see uh, manganese plus ESMN, weight percent of mn plus let's next let's look at silicon essi weight percent of si plus lastly yung last na kasama niya sa solution si copper es copper weight percent copper so notice here ang kinonsider lang natin is yung mga kapares na solute kasi interaction with solutes na tinitingnan natin so, sulfur, sulfur, carbon, carbon, manganese, manganese, silicon, silicon, copper, copper, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we just put in yung values na nakalagay dito and dito into here. So, we have log HS is equal to, ay, sorry, dito. Kulang pala ako, plus log weight percent of sulfur. So, usually nakakalimutan natin yan. Ako lagi ko siya nakakalimutan. So, tandaan nyo lang, ilagay nyo rin log weight percent sulfur kasi transform natin ito into log scale. Log tayo siya. Lagay rin log weight percent sulfur dito. So, ESS from the given is negative 0 0.028. Negative 0 0.028. Weight percent of S is 6. So, this will come 0. 0.0 Zero six 
no need to make this uh hindi na kailangan i-transform si percentage into yung real number gamitin na ko ano yung nakalagay doon so 0.06% siya lagay niyo na yung 0.06 wag niyo siyang gawin 0.0006 plus esc 0.114 ayan 0.114 times yung weight percent ng carbon 4% so lagay natin siya 4 plus es of manganese negative 0.25 minus 0.025 times yung weight percent ng manganese which is 1.5 again 1.5 na lang siya accounted na din sa conversion conversion natin kanina plus es of si es of si 0.066 0.066 weight percent of SI is 1.5% so ilagay din natin ito 1.5 and lastly we have yung copper ES copper is negative 0.012 and yung weight percent niya is 0.2% times 0.2 so again tandaan natin ito hindi nyo ito convert into numbers kunin nyo na lang kung ano yung percentage niya so kung 1% siya lagay nyo lang dyan is 1 and if we solve for this one, we'll get log of HS is equal to negative 0 0.7084. And since we need new activity, and activity is always evaluating 0 to 1, HS is equal to, this is a uh, 10 raised to negative 0 0.7084. So this will be value less than 1 or equal to 0 0.1957. Ay, kulang pala kayo. So, kulang pa ako dito ng log of 0 0.06 or log weight percent of sulfur. Yan. Huwag nyo kakalimutan niya kasi like nakakalimutan. So, if solve for this one, you get ito. And we get HS equal to 0 0.1957. So, this is the activity of sulfur.